Hello YouTube, it's Lion here with Hobbies of a Man once again, and today we are doing another manga review. Now today we are going to be reviewing volumes 1, 2, and 3 of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Now, this is written by Cool Kyo Sinja, which is that person. <laughs> yeah, his name is really odd, but uh, I, I really like him as an author. I think he's pretty good. Uh, the publisher is Seven Seas, as you guys can see right there. Let me put it this way so you guys can see. There you go. And uh, the demographic is Seinen, which I didn't actually know. I thought it was a shonen title, but I mean, now that I've read it, I do think it makes sense that it's a Seinen, so yeah. Uh, the genres here are comedy, fantasy, and there's elements of Yuri, but there's also elements of like regular heteronormative relationships too, so... I don't necessarily think that the Yuri tag is necessary here. Um, but, you know, the main relationship is between two women, so I guess that's why. But, uh, yeah. This does have an anime adaptation, uh, which aired, like, four years ago, I think. And the new season is coming out soon, which, as far as I know, le like starts right at the end of the third volume. Because what I've seen in the trailer is directly correlated to the end of the third volume. So... Um, yeah, but I, I, I watched the first half of it and I thought it was really good. Um, but I don't, I don't know, uh, that much about it. So I think it's on Crunchyroll, might be on Funimation. I'm not really sure. And, uh, yeah. So the premise here is that this drunk office worker by the name of Kobayashi, which is this nice lady in the pink, um, sorry, Kobayashi ends up <laughs> getting drunk. She walks through the forest and she finds this dragon. And then, uh, you know, they get to talking. And then Kobayashi says, hey, you can go live at my house if you need a place to stay. The next morning comes and the dragon is there. And now they basically have to live together for however long they can. And, you know, the dragon, Toru, decides that she's going to be Kobayashi's maid in order to pay her back for, you know, helping her and for, you know, letting her stay in her house. Uh, in her home. Sorry, I tried to say house and home at the same time. Um, and uh, yeah, basically, there's this kind of blooming relationship between them. And uh, along the way, there's also way too many other creatures that show up and kind of want to interact with the human world thanks to Toru being there. So it's all very cute and it's a very episodic slice of life story. Um, and I don't know, I just really enjoyed it. It's a very relaxing read, and overall, I think it's really enjoyable. There's a few kind of things that I maybe didn't love, but that don't really hinder the enjoyment for me. But <laughs> according to Twitter, there's a lot of stuff wrong with this manga, so I don't know, take what you will um, from that discourse, I guess. Now, the plot line here is good. It's a very basic idea. You know, how would a human and a monster, in this case a dragon, interact if they had to live together? And then what happens if they start to like each other and develop a relationship with each other? And, you know, basically every story, every chapter or two or three chapters that contain a specific story kind of deal with this idea. And it all kind of starts to develop into this whole idea of found family, you know, of you figuring out who you belong with and then from there figuring out that, hey, maybe I don't have the best relationship with my real family, with my blood family, but I have found my own little slice of happiness with these other people. And I just think that's a beautiful story. I mean, I don't have any problems with my own family and I, I'm really happy in the situation that I'm in, but it's just a really heartwarming kind of like lovable idea that permeates so many of these slice of life found family type of stories that really just like makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside and I just really love that um you know situation so yeah basically the plot line also is about you know involving all of these magical creatures into the human world so basically every volume basically introduces two new dragons so the first volume introduces toru and kana um kana is the famous dragon lolly uh as you guys can see right here there you go and then volume two introduces fafnir and um lokua i think which is this nice lady over here and then volume three introduces 
Elma, which is this uh, dragon girl right there, and Ilulu, I think, uh, which is the dragon lolly with the big old pies that uh, made Twitter go re the other day. Let me see if I can find it here. There you go. This isn't really a spoiler because it's in, it's in a trailer, but there you go. That's Ilulu. And uh, yeah, it, it's a very fun idea. There's a lot of different stuff. And there's a certain element of otaku culture that kind of permeates the book as well, which is actually really fun. We have uh, people that are obsessed with video games, people that make their own doujins. So they go to comic cats, which is cool. And, you know, just like office lady work time. So it's fun. And I really did enjoy it. I think it was a very lovely read it's not very like plot heavy like every story is separate and every story has a very small beginning middle and end and it's not very huge but there is a certain overarching idea of like meeting towards falling in love towards like living happily ever after that we kind of feel that is happening but obviously the manga is like nowhere near done as far as i'm aware and it's only up to 10 volumes at least uh here in the u.s so there's probably a long way to go before we get there. So yeah, now the characters who are probably the most enjoyable part, I really love all of them. Um, although I don't necessarily love some of the stuff that happens with some of the characters. In general, I do think that all the characters are really interesting. So we have Kobayashi, who we don't really know her name. So it's kind of interesting. We just know her last name and it's like good enough for everyone. But uh, she's basically an every everyman character, right? She's a girl, but she's also kind of really neutral, like... For all intent and purpose, she could be a man as, as easily as she is a woman. And it would really make no difference to the story. But, you know, she's a girl. But she's so neutral that really anyone can, like, put themselves in her situation and kind of live through her in this beautiful, you know, world of Mr. Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. So I actually really like her in that sense. Because, yeah, she's an everyman. And, yes, she's super, like, uh, like, um, what's it called? engageable i guess or like like super easy to impose yourself on her but she still has certain elements to her that make a lot of sense she's very introverted she doesn't really like showing her emotions very often the only time she does is when she's really excited or when she's angry and drunk and overall she's just a very neutral person that really doesn't know how to navigate the kind of idea that people want to spend time with her and people like her as an individual that's a very relatable trait um, and something that, you know, most people, if not everyone, has gone through at some point in their life. So she's super, like, connectable, right? If that makes sense. And I, I really like her a lot. Now we have Toru, who is a very traditional Western dragon. Uh, four legs, pair of wings. So she's not a wyvern, but she's like, um, like the really majestic dragons. And she's a maid, and she's super bubbly. I really like her, and she she's kind of has this, like, almost yandere obsession with Kobayashi, which I think is really cute. Um, It's a very concerning idea in real life, but in the context of a story, it's actually very, very cute. And she's so, like, funny because she doesn't really know how humans work, but she knows enough to not, like, look completely ridiculous. But the few things that she doesn't know kind of really make it funny. And I just really enjoy how she is and how she interacts. And the whole load of little stupid gags that she has with Kobayashi. Like the way she uh, cleans Kobayashi's uh, underwear by eating it and then uh, like drying it or something. And then like the whole thing with her tail. Like she tries to get Kobayashi to eat it um, because it's like a sign of love but Kobayashi's like what the hell I'm not gonna eat your tail because it's like one poisonous and two it's ridiculous to, ridiculous to eat someone that you know right so I mean also can, cannibalism is bad but technically Toru isn't a human so it wouldn't be cannibalism but like yeah you, you guys understand what I'm trying to say um and I just really enjoy how they they interact and then there's Kana who is a Hokkaido dragon right uh, kana kamui is a dragon from hokkaido legend or hokkaido native um peoples and and their mythology and and it's like this dragon that lives in the middle of this place in hokkaido which used to be called enzo Ezo, i think um and has like electrical powers and stuff like that and you know that's kana and that's why she's dressed the way she is apparently that's like inspired by traditional garb that you know native hokkaido hokkaido people 
used to wear. I really like that. And in the in the manga, she is basically Kobayashi's daughter. Essentially, she 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 is essentially adopted by Kobayashi. She goes to school. She has friends in school, and she's just so so cute. The one thing I don't like is the lolly lewd stuff that happens with her. Not because I like I don't like lollies in general, and I usually don't really give a shit because it, like whatever, it's just a drawing. I'm not gonna you know get mad at it because I it's not real. But some of the situations just like are a little bit too un like uncomfortable for me, and so I don't really love it. But I also don't really care. It's like kind of funny sometimes. But you know. I just really like her character design. I don't love that she gets like lolly, um, lewd stuff happening to her sometimes. Um, but I also end up really not caring because there's so much better stuff to focus on that, you know, a few instances of lolly lewd stuff doesn't really bother me, right? But yeah, Kana is just so cute. I really like her a lot. Then we have Fafnir, who is this uh, Norse uh, dragon. I guess he's kind of like Nidhogg in, in the sense that he's like basically a giant crocodile thing um, or like a giant lizard. Um, but, you know, mythologically, he's, he's the son of a dwarf, a uh, dwarf king that turns into a dragon and then something happens, right? And in, in the human version, he's basically a butler and he's a loner and he's really obsessed with video games and he lives with Kobayashi's um, colleague at work. So, yeah, it's a pretty funny guy. I <laughs> The whole gag with him is that he's always obsessed with killing people. He's just like, no, kill them all, you know, <laughs> destroy everything. And, and it's really funny because Toru tries to ask him for advice. And as soon as he says kill them, he's like, she's like, okay, never mind. I'm not going to talk to you because you have no good advice to give me. And then we have Lokua, who is actually my favorite dragon character. One, because she's inspired by Native American, uh, like Native Mesoamerican culture. Um, and two, because I just, I just really like, uh, you know, her whole Ara Ara vibe. So yeah, Lokua is based on the uh, Quetzalcoatl, uh, Quetzalcoatl, or um, alternatively, she's also based on the Kukulkan or the Kukumats, which are uh, Mesoamerican feathered serpent gods, right? And um, that actually plays into her backstory and a lot of the things that she does make a lot of sense and yeah she's Mexican and she doesn't have tan skin and stuff but that actually is very uh, you know correct to the legend of Quetzalcoatl because it is said that you know when he came down to talk to the Mayans he was a white man um, and he had, I think he had uh, yellow hair as well so um, and he taught them how to produce corn and stuff and he like helped them develop you know humanity and stuff like that so it's actually very cool that Lokua uh, has, you know, white skin and blonde hair. And if you see, her hair actually turns kind of green at the end, which makes it look like corn and corn leaves and stuff like that. So I actually quite like that. I think it's very nicely done. Um, and I really like her because she's she's just like really pretty and she has this whole kind of like Oni-chan vibe. The one thing I don't really like is that she like basically unintentionally... Um, basically abuses this kid Shota um which I I don't really care because again it's fiction it doesn't really bother me but I really dislike that people focus so much on Kana and everyone forgets about Shota and it's just like dude both of them are like the lolly con thing why do you only care about the female one and not the male one because you know it's a, <laughs> it's it's just as bad so like I don't know I really dislike that whole kind of like uneven caring about that stuff but overall I, I don't really like whatever it's it's a drawing i don't care that much you know and uh yeah Lokua is just fun i really like her as a character i i really enjoy that she's super wise um but she's also really dumb so it, it's really cute i really do like it a lot and then the last character is elma and she's a sea serpent god i think and she's an office lady. And really, we don't really know that much about her. But I just love how cute she is. Because she always, like, is hungry. And she always wants to eat. And that's just so adorable. So, yeah. I just like all of the characters in Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Now, world building wise here, it's good. The dragons are awesome. And they're super powerful. They're basically gods. I mean, Lokua is actually a god. So, that's pretty cool. Um, and they're all rather ancient, like they, they age at a very different rate. And that kind of rate 
kind of translates to how they look as humans. So that's why Kana looks really young. It's because as a dragon, she's like a bunch of years old, 300 or something years old. But in terms of dragons, she's like a kid compared to everyone else. I think Toru looks like a 17 year old and then Fafnir and Lokua look like 20 year olds or something like that. So, but I'm not really sure. So don't quote me on that, but it's very interesting. And there's also two major factions of dragons, Chaos and Harmony Dragons. And I think uh, everyone in the manga is a Chaos Dragon so far, except Elma, because they're all friends of Toru's and Toru is a Chaos Dragon. So that's pretty cool. Um, in general, I just really enjoy that whole kind of like there's a lot of lore, we just don't explore it because it's really not super relevant to Kobayashi. Um, but when they do explore it and Kobayashi asks about it, there's a lot of good stuff there. Um, so, good stuff, I really do enjoy it. And, uh, yeah. Now, art-wise, honestly, when you first pick it up, it does seem a little bit weird. It seems really odd because their heads are huge, their, their bodies are really skinny and stuff like that, but... Once you get used to it, it actually ends up being super, super cute. It kind of has this very nice, like, enjoyable vibe, if that makes sense, right? So, I don't know. I just really, really like it. Let me see if I can show you. Uh, see, there you go. Kana just looks fucking weird, right? Because she has a giant head and, like, this weird kind of, like, body. But, I don't know. It just ends up being really cute once you get used to it. And I just really like it a lot. Um, and fan service, like I said earlier, there is some, and it's not always good. There's a certain amount of, uh, lolly kind of stuff that shows up that I don't particularly care, uh, about, but it, it leads to a lot of people on Twitter and stuff like that to really act negatively towards the series when the series isn't really about the fan service. It's all about the family dynamic thing. It's just that the fan service is there because it sells, right? Um, and I really don't like the whole um, thing that happens with, like, people getting super mad and saying horrible things about, like, the, the people that made the animation. Like, I saw the other day that there was these people that were, like, saying that it was a good thing that the guy from Kino Animations, uh, or Kyoto Anima Animations, that um, worked on the original season had died in that uh, horrible accident that happened with him. I think it was an earthquake. And I was just like, what the hell is wrong with you, man? Just because... Just because you don't like a certain aspect of a series that wasn't even made for you, you have to say that you want this person to die and that you're happy that he did. Like, what the hell is wrong with you? People on Twitter that are anime fans are really, really concerning. Like, yeah, I was really mad about that because, like, I, I'm not even that big of a fan of the series. I mean, I am now that I've started reading the manga. But, like, at the time that I saw that, I was just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like... How can you say that? Like, how horrible of a person do you have to be to, like, bandy this moral flag about lollies and how horrible they are and how they promote, you know, garbage shit and then go and tell someone that it's good that they died because you didn't like this thing. Like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> but, yeah, dude, I, I don't really want to talk about it, but... Yeah, there's a few lolly moments. There's some Shota stuff. If you don't like that, or if you can't tolerate it, because I don't like it either, but I can tolerate it because it doesn't bother me. Like, it's just a drawing, man. Get over it. Um, If you don't like that stuff, this might not be for you. But overall, I think this is a really good story. So you should give it a chance anyways. And then if you decide that you don't want to, then go for it, right? I get rid of it. But yeah, everything else, all the other fan service aspects are wonderful and they're very fun and they add a little bit of spice to the story. It's just the lolly ones and the Shota ones that really are like, eh, you know, but overall, good stuff. Rating wise, this is a four out of five. I think it's a very solid story and I really enjoy how relaxing and enjoyable it is to read. Um... It, it just has a very nice warm feeling to it. And I just think it's so cute. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> I just, I, I can't justify not giving it a four um, because everything about it is just so good and so enjoyable. Of course, there's nothing that really blew my socks off. So that's why it's not like a five out of five, but you know, purely on enjoyment, it's just really good. So there you go. Now, do I recommend this title? Yes, I recommend this for sure. 100% this is a really fun, cute story. 
Um, similar titles though. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe some other type of uh, Yuri Monster Girl type of stuff. Like uh, I've been killing slimes for 300 years and maxed up my level. That one's a pretty good one and it's pretty similar. I would say um, very kind of close vibes. But um, obviously that one is a little bit more magical than Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. So yeah. Um, but other than that, I don't really know that there's anything quite similar enough to really justify it being here. So yeah, if you like uh, 300 years and max out my level, you'll probably like Miss Kobayashi. And if you like Miss Kobayashi, you'll probably like that other one. So yeah, that's it for me though. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys are doing okay. And you know, that stuff is going well for you. And I appreciate everyone that has been showing support to the channel and, you know, just <laughs> helping me grow. I really appreciate you guys and I appreciate every comment that you guys leave. And uh, thank you guys so much. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching and see you guys later.